So if you ever gone into the console and type gem sources, you would see that it's returned with HTTPS rubygems.org. And if you go to this site, you can see that it's a Ruby repository. And you might already know all of this, but today I want to kind of describe what is a Ruby gem. A Ruby gem is simply a library or a package containing some functions or functionality to extend your application or to provide some kind of application that's a command line interface or something similar. So Ruby gems is the repository that has all the different gems that people have published up. And because you have Ruby gems as one of your sources, you can do something like gem install bundler, and this will download and install bundler. You can do the same thing for rails. So in this episode, I actually want to show you how you can create your own gem. And one of the ways that you can create your gem is through bundler. So you can do something like bundle, and then you can say gem, and then the name of your gem package, whatever you want to release. And in this case, I'm going to create a gem called leftpad. And you'll see that this has created several different files for you. And let's go ahead and go into this directory, and then we'll take a look at what is created. So right off the bat, you can see that a readme file is created, a rake file, license, and then a gem spec file, your gem file, and then some other stuff with a code of conduct, a Travis YAML file, and this is for continuous integration, a R spec file for testing, and then a git ignore. So any files in the git ignore would not be added to your git repository. So the readme file gives you just a pretty standard template of what should go into this file. And this is one of my pet peeves when I'm creating a gem, is that a gem should be very well documented, either through the readme or a link to a wiki for this gem. And by default, the gem will have a license text file that's a MIT license. So if the gem that you're creating is not going to use the MIT license, make sure that you change this file to the appropriate license. Then if we look at the gem file, and this is where things get a little bit weird because, so it's going to get the gems from the rubygems.org, but then you have this line gem spec. So for all the dependencies within your gem, you're not actually going to specify in the gem file, but rather in the leftpad.gem spec. So if we look at the leftpad gem spec, you will have to come in here to make some changes. One of the changes that you'll have to do is change the summary, the description, and the home page. If you leave these things with the to do in there, then it's actually going to throw an error when you compile the gem. And just so we can kind of see that, we can call gem build and then pass in our leftpad.gem spec. Then you'll see that there's a fix me or to do in the description. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and just remove these to do's. And if we want to push our gem to Ruby gems, then we can just kind of delete that area. And then what files to be included, it's going to run this git ls files, and it's going to reject everything that's a test spec or features folder, and it's going to include the rest of it. And then we get down to the development dependencies, and this is where you will have the different dependencies that are required for the development of the gem. If you have a dependency that's required for the actual application, then you can just do something like spec.add dependency and then the name of your gem. And it's usually good practice to put some kind of versioning restriction on that. So then in the bin folder, this is where you would create any kind of executables that's going to be available for your application. For example, if you had a command line interface or something like that, that you're going to provide with your gem. The lib directory is where the core of your application is going to live. So all the functions and the libraries that you're creating will live within the lib folder. And any kind of tests that you have for the application or gem is going to live in the spec folder. So within the lib folder, if we look at the leftpad.rb, you'll see that it's just going to require a version file within the leftpad folder. And then we have our module leftpad, and then we can enter in all of our code. The leftpad version is simply just the module leftpad, and then it has a version 010. So with this leftpad gem, let's say if we want to make a gem that takes in and extends a string class, and it's allowing the user to put in the number of characters and then some kind of filler. So we could just replace this comment with our code. So we have our module left pad, and then we have this method left pad, and then we just take our characters and we have a space for our filler. 
And then we just set the right justification to the number of characters and then a filler. And at the bottom here, we can just kind of throw this in where we just have a class string and we include our left pad module. So now if we try to build our gem with the gem build left pad dot gem spec, you'll see that it has successfully compiled version 010. And if we look at our directory, we now have the gem. We can do gem install left pad to install our gem. And then we can try it out within IRB. So first we'll require left pad. And then we can take some kind of string. And then we can call left pad. And then we can provide the number of characters. And then the spacer that we want to fill it with. And then you see the gem works. So let's say if we start making some major changes to our gem. And it could break versions. And when we want to publish a new gem, we would need to bump the gem version. So we can come into our version.rb file. And then just using semantic versioning, we can do a version bump. If it's a patch change to where we're fixing some bugs, it's not really a major release or anything, then we would bump the last number. If it's a bit more of a potential breaking change or there's a lot more changes within here, and you kind of want to alert the user that they maybe need to run some specs or test their application, then you can bump the version minor. And if it's a major release, then you may want to bump the major version. And one important thing about writing gems is to have tests. You want to make sure that your gem works and it works well. A gem is kind of like a function where it's supposed to do just one thing and one thing really well. So you do want to come into your spec folder and then into your left pad spec or whatever the name of your application is. And then you'll see that it has some default R specs written for you. So I'm going to just put out some specs that I already have. And this is supposed to left pad with no padding characters. So if we have left and then call left pad with eight and we don't provide any kind of spacer, then it's going to just return this result and it should equal it. So again, we have left dot left pad. We want eight characters padding and then we pass in zero. Then we should get this result. And if we have our left pad with fewer padding characters, so if we have a four character string, then we call left pad, but only specify two characters, and then we want to fill it with zeros, then we would expect it to be left because our initial string was longer than two characters. And I plan to cover our spec in much more depth in a future episode. But for now, back in our terminal, we can just call our spec, and then we can pass in the name of our folder. And in our case, it is spec. And this will run through all the tests. You'll see that we have our four passing tests. Once you're comfortable with your gem and you want to make a release, we can build our gem to make sure it builds. And once we have finished up our gem and we want to release it, we can call gem push and then pass in the name of our gem. You'll see that it's trying to push it to rubygems.org. And now we have successfully registered the gem left pad and we have published version 121. The first time you do this, you will need to register for an account on rubygems.org with a username and password. And once you go to push the gem, it's going to prompt you when you push it to enter in your username and password that you have registered on rubygems. We can go to rubygems.org and search for left pad and then you can see we have our version and that it's available for download. So if I uninstall my gem left pad, I'm just going to change out of the left pad directory. And then I can do a gem install left pad. And then you will see that it is fetching it from rubygems.org and installing it. And also don't forget to push up your code to GitHub or whatever code repository that you'll be using because it's good to have this version controlled. And if version control is an episode that you would like to see, just let me know and I'll consider adding that in. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.